good place now. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, we're going to be talking about unconscious behaviors. We're going to be talking about reflections of how we see ourselves and how we influence others. You know, it's interesting how simple words and thoughts can either heal us or hurt us. And, and I find that many of us are walking around with what I like to call the negative broken record. You know, it's the same lyrics over and over again. Nothing changes. And we need to overcome that to be able to heal ourselves and to be able to transform our lives. And I found that a lot of times we can see, you know, other people's issues that they need to deal with, but it's hard to see our own. It's that it's those blind spots that we have. And in order to really see that, we have to get mindful. We got to get conscious. We got to begin to take an inventory, uh, maybe even an inventory of our flaws or the things that we need to work on. And everybody has things that they need to work on. It doesn't make you a bad person. You know, that's the thing is that, you know, a lot of times we feel like we have to be all or nothing. We have to be amazing or not. You know, we make one mistake, we make one bad choice, or we have one flaw or, or multiple flaws, and we feel small, inadequate, and it's not true. It's just, it's human. It's human to have these things. And so we need to take an inventory, it, and we also need to have forgiveness as well. And so I figured, who better to talk about this? Then Patricia Love. Patricia is the raw, raw coach. You can find information on Patricia at patricialove.com. And, you know, she has a program and a concept of healing yourself and healing the world. And I think this is so true because we have to heal ourselves first before we can heal other people, right? It's like, you know, when they tell you on the plane and they say, hey, you know, if we have a loss of cabin pressure... You know, the oxygen mask are going to come out from the ceiling, put one on you before you put one on your child or on other or anybody else for that matter. And it's so true because, you know, oxygen or having that ability to heal yourself or having that forthright or that mind, mindfulness or being able to be self-reflective, all of those are very important. And so we're going to be talking about that with Patricia today. And, you know, one of the greatest things about the show that we have for you today is that you're going to take something from this show and you're going to take you're going to take it and you're going to be able to use this whatever you get from this show forever. So it's going to be a great show. Patricia, great to have you live on Live Your True Life Perspectives. How are you doing today? I am doing awesome and I'm just thrilled to be here to chat with you about this because this is uh this is what I live for. I love this because I am uh I'm one of those people that was perfectly and still am perfectly flawed and continually make mistakes and uh we have to forgive ourselves a little bit. So, yeah, I'm just thrilled to be here. I'm happy, and uh, I think we're going to have a great discussion to today. I totally agree with you, and I can't wait. We're going to have some fun. So let's jump in right now, and let's start talking because, Patricia, you know, uh, it's interesting. You do a lot of coaching, and you, you coach more women than men, but you do a lot mm -hmm. of coaching. And, you know, what is the fundamental basis of your coaching? So the fundamental the base, the real basis of it is really um, helping women to understand to treat themselves like they want to be, treat others. In other words, it's we're all hurting in so many ways that if we don't fix ourselves, we can't help anybody else. Just like you kind of talked about a, a minute ago um as flying on the airplane, if you don't put the oxygen mask on yourself, I find that so many women, this is primarily who I coach, they just don't refuel. They don't want to stop to take care of themselves. They don't want to do anything in that regards. And what happens is they either break down, get stressed out, get overwhelmed. They can't go forward. And my goal is to help these women realize that they can take control and empower themselves and move forward and not only heal themselves, They'll be healing the world, too, because of they'll be changing their behaviors. That's powerful stuff. And you're right. You can't help other people if you don't have the energy and the mental fortitude, but also that emotional strength to be able to be part of it and be in the moment. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, truly, it's um, the main thing is we can just get off the hamster wheel. Um a lot of people are on the hamster wheel right now. They're just going, 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 and they just don't know how 
they can't get anything done. They don't know how they can do this or how they can fix themselves. They don't know how they can take care of this. They can't take care of them. But they don't realize that if they don't stop, if they don't stop and step off that wheel, even for five minutes or even for just a small period of time to refocus and refuel and get their life together, then they're going to be worse off in the long run and they they'll, they'll stress themselves out. They'll get ill. They'll get uh, their health will go down. I mean, there's all so many different things that will happen if you don't take care of yourself and, you know, just not only taking care of yourself, but looking into yourself and realizing, you know, maybe I could fix a few things. Maybe I got a few flaws that maybe if I fixed them or worked on them, that um, I could move forward and help other people. But people like you've mentioned, they just hate to mention they have any flaws. It's like they're they're criticizing that inner critic that says, oh, my God, I'm a really bad person. And I will say, you know, when you're first admit to yourself that you've got some flaws, sometimes you do feel a little guilty. Sometimes you do feel like, you know, like, oh, God, you know. I actually did do that, or, you know, I, I, I do do that. But you know what, you if you don't acknowledge it, what, you can't fix it. So I find that that's one of the biggest, biggest problems, like just acknowledging where you're at um, so you can move forward. You know, Patricia, that's so true. And I think that, you know, anybody that's out there that's listening right now, you know, it's okay if, if you've screwed up. You know what I screw up all the time, girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's okay. And I think that that's the problem in society is that what's happened here, and I, and I think, Patricia, I think you'll agree with me on this, is that we're in a society where you can do all the right things all the time, every day, all day, and then one day you make a choice and you make the wrong decision. And it's like you could have given all this great stuff, but it's almost like you're painted black. And it's and and I think we as individuals begin to ingrain on that, you know, and, and connect with that energy. And it's it's all the wrong energy. It's really okay. Yeah, you might have made a, a, a wrong choice or a choice that wasn't perfect or not the best solution, but you can always change that. You can always go back and augment that, but you have to be willing to take that inventory. Exactly. And I want to say that, you know, the best word, and I'm a big word person, and we'll talk about that later, but is when you've made a choice one time, you know, because sometimes we all have choices and sometimes we don't choose right, correct? I mean, I, I've chosen wrong lots of times, but the whole beauty of life is we can reset. We can reset and just start again. And I love that word reset. I'll just, well, okay, I made a, I made a little minor mistake. That didn't go well. So uh, maybe I'll just reset this and move forward to the next one. Because we can't go backwards. So people that belabor the mistakes in the past, they're just, it's just energy grabbing. It's just energy that they're taking from that, that they that they can't utilize in the present and in the future because it's sucking them dry with the negative energy. Whereas if you can just say to yourself, well, I made a little boo-boo today or I made a boo-boo yesterday or made a big one, you know, or whatever it might be. You can always reset every single minute. Not, it doesn't even have to be every day. It's every single second, every single minute. You know, I reset a lot because, you know, we all make little mistakes and we're because we're human. And I really want to get that across to people is that guys, we're human. We are going to make mistakes. We're going to, continually to make mistakes it's how you embrace them and how you learn from them that's going to continue to help you grow to move forward and that's the key is is, is learning from the mistakes and not re um you know doing the same behaviors over and over again because what what do they say if you keep doing the same same thing over and over and over again what happens you get the same result so it's choosing and then and then looking at things differently maybe in a different perspective um, so really being more open-minded, I guess, but growth is important. And I, that's so true. And it's like about learning from something. And one of the things that I found is that it can be some of the toughest lessons. And, and many of you out there know that you've probably learned some tough lessons, many, maybe lately, maybe a huge lesson and it's, it's painful, but yet at the same way, it depends on how we turn it around to make it worthwhile, to make it something powerful to make it something that we can grow from. And it's like, you know, Patricia, it's interesting when you're talking about, you know, taking that inventory and acknowledging that. But the next step 
is that forgiveness, right? Is forgiving right. the the peace. And that's, and that's interesting. And let's talk a little bit more about that before we go to break. So how do you begin to have that forgiveness for yourself for, for doing something that you're not that proud of, or you feel like you made a, a wrong choice? Well, the first thing you have to realize that you need to learn to forgive. Now there's two versions of this. For, you, you need to forgive. You don't need to forget the two different things. Um, because sometimes we need to learn from things that maybe we did wrong or things that happen and you learn from these. But if you do not forgive, forgiveness is one of those things that and when I was just talking earlier about sucking the energy out of your drive, it hatred, um, negative energy, just it's a slow suck that pulls on you and you can never figure out why you can't move forward and you feel so heavy. And it's like, it's like um, putting in a suitcase, continually putting uh, negative behaviors and, 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 and people that you just can't forgive or you can't let go of, of these negative things, whether that's forgiveness for yourself for making those mistakes or forgiveness from other people that maybe did you wrong, that you're like, oh, I'm, you know, I hate them. I'm going to, you know, then you're just playing a victim. And the biggest thing is most of these people that maybe did you wrong, first off, don't even remember. Maybe they're passed away. They they don't even know what they did in some ways. And a lot. And I like to say sometimes to people, it's like, you know what? Forgive them for they knew they do not know what they do because that you don't know where their uh, story began. You know, they maybe have their own story. So you got to forgive them of of um, of taking your energy, but you don't have to forget whether it's the act, and you just learn from that. Um, and I know that once you forgive, I'm going to tell you, it's the biggest bricks that will come off of you and, and, and you will feel so much lighter. And the very first thing is forgiving yourself for even thinking that you can't forgive other people. It's okay. It's a natural thing that we, if somebody does something wrong to you, we just like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to forgive them. I hate them, blah, blah, blah. But there's so much energy that's being stolen and you have so much life to live that by, don't you want to take that? energy and put it into the present and move into the future and so you can start loving and caring because again that that forgiveness or lack of forgiveness will show in your future relationships your future um anything you might be doing because it'll pop up and start sabotaging you again that's so true we're gonna be talking more about forgiveness we're also gonna be talking more about that internal voice and the inner voice that we have so stay tuned because Patricia will be sticking with us here on Live Your True Life Perspective. So don't turn it. We'll be back this I'll time in just two shakes. <laughs> turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives. Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, we're talking about, well, we're talking about healing yourself and healing the world. And right before the break, uh, Patricia Love and I have been talking about inventory of your flaws, understanding your flaws. We all have them, you know, getting right with them, you know, figuring it out and learning from them. You know, when, when we make mistakes, the thing about mistakes is... You shouldn't beat yourself down over and over and over and over and over and over again because what happens when you beat yourself up and you don't forgive yourself is you don't get anything out of it. You know, the thing is, is that you end up going down, kicking the can down the road and just being upset. And, you know, Patricia, and by the way, Patricia, by the way, if you're just now tuning in, is the Raw Raw Coach. And, you know, Patricia, tell me, you know, I'm sure that you work with clients who something went bad or something went wrong, some challenge, some hiccup in the road. And you see people, and I'm sure you've worked with many clients like this, where you're like, come on, let's get up. Let's let's dust ourselves off. We've got to learn from this instead of just getting depressed down and beating ourselves up. Oh, yeah. Work with, I work with a lot of people like that. You know what? Even myself. I mean, it's one of those things that you have to – you mentioned inventory, but I want to say also that changing is scary, uh, and I get that. Change is very scary, and and I know the bottom line, the most everybody out there, and I would say 99, there might be that small person that doesn't want to be happy, but I believe that there's everybody out there, all they really want in life is to be happy and sometimes things happen and things get negative things happen and they're not happy 
And it's just the learning that and understanding that, okay, so I'm not happy. Something didn't happen right. I need to kind of stand up here, dust myself off. I used to, I, I like to use the word pivot, change, change my way of doing things, maybe go from things from a different angle, knowing that I will be supported by my friends or a coach or whatever it might be. Uh, because sometimes it's hard when you get down and depressed um, to get back up at times. But I like to say that we all have this inner voice and I call it the little cheerleader, you might say, but we all, you can call it any name you want to, but we all have this little cheerleader inside of us. And it's just really is what happens when we get depressed or really down. It's just really, really quiet. But then you start asking, you know, like, where are you? Where are you little cheerleader? In fact, I've actually helped people in telling them to name their inner cheerleader something, you know, whatever it is. So they actually have a conversation with that person. Sounds a little crazy to maybe have a talking with yourself, but sometimes you have to talk yourself up, you might say, um, instead of talking yourself down. So it's like, you know, getting up and say, hey, look at little cheerleader, I'm going to get my butt up and I'm going to move forward. I'm going to brush myself off and I'm going to continue on and doing it in a really small steps. Because I think the other thing that people do, and I find a lot of my clients do this, they want to take giant leaps. And if they don't get to that giant leap, they get very discouraged. And so by really helping people take little teeny small goal type steps and then celebrating, and I mean really celebrating, getting up and doing a jig when you actually do something or have a small aha moment or just did something that pushed you half a step forward, celebrating that because what that does, it builds confidence in you. And when you have more, and the more confidence you build in yourself, the more chances are you're going to move forward because you feel good about that. It's taking control of your life. And that's so important. And, you know, that's the biggest thing is that I, you find that a lot of folks, you know, feel that they don't control their own life, that other people control them or they feel controlled or they don't feel like that. And, and it's interesting when you do get into that powerful position you know and decide to basically drive the vehicle of your life and and you know you see a lot of folks and I've been there before and I know Patricia you've been there before I'm sure you know when there was a time when we weren't we were a passenger in our life and there was nobody at the <laughs> wheel you know and it's like where am I going I don't know and it's like well I don't know why things aren't going the way I want them to go well it's I'm not being mindful enough to figure out where I need to go and I'm too scared. And sometimes you get into that part of being in, in, in a place of inaction, right? Where you don't right. seem to be able right. to act. And, you know, what are some things, what are some thoughts that you have about that? If somebody right now listening to the, to the podcast and they say, you know, uh, I'm in a place where I'm just going through a lot of stress and uh, I'm a little anxious and I just feel like I'm unable to continue to move forward. You know, how would you, what, right. what suggestions would you give them or some tips that they could kind of use right now? Yeah, you know, the very first thing that I would say is really acknowledging that you're in that place. Um, I know when people are in grief or whatever, it could be a loss of somebody or a loss of things, or maybe just you're not doing well, maybe your job's gone, or you're just feeling like down and out. It's really acknowledging it there, because the worst thing people can do is compartmentalize it, is sweep it under the rug, because what happens is it comes out later. If you don't acknowledge it, when I say acknowledge it, so and I and I want to say that you know respectfully, but acknowledge the fact of where you're at, and and just saying you know, gosh, I am feeling very depressed. I do not feel like going anywhere today. I it's, life sucks, and maybe you do take that day to acknowledge that and feel it. And what are those feelings? Because what we don't do most of the time is feel what we're feeling. We just, you know, like, oh, God, I'm depressed. I don't want anybody to know. I don't want anybody to think, you know, whatever. You're, so you're like, you know, in a negative space. But the first thing you need to do is really acknowledge it. And then once you've acknowledged it and you say to yourself, okay, I do not want to stay in this space, then I want you to pick a word. And I use this word all the time because it makes and turns me and puts me in control is the word choose. And where you're going to say, I am choosing to get up and move forward today. I am choosing to take those steps towards finding a job. I am choosing 
to not eat this today because I feel very distraught because I've been eating, overeating or something. But when you use the word choose, even when you say it, it puts you in control. And that's the problem with being depressed or having anxiety or stressed out is basically you're not in control of something. And the only thing that we can control is ourselves, like you like you talked about. And we can't control the outside world. We can't control a lot of other actions that are happening, but we can control ourselves. And by using certain words, like the word choose is the very first tip that I would tell anybody, give it a shot, give it a try, put that in your vocabulary. I'm choosing to do this today. You're going to see a major difference and actually the very first day, if you keep using this word and you're going to feel like, wow, I'm starting to feel in control. So that'd be my first big tip. So the idea of choosing. Choosing. You're choosing what what you want to do for that day. I'm going to choose to move forward. I'm going to choose to have goals. I'm going to choose to write out a list that I need to do. I choose. And then um, it, it's when you use that word, it just it's a power, very powerful word. And you want to put yourself back in power because when you're in depression or anxiety or stress, you are power, you're 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 powerless, you might say, uh, because you're allowing those feelings and those um, emotions to take over. When you can say, "I'm going to choose not to be stressed today. I'm going to choose to move forward and be positive, positive today. I'm going to choose to say great affirmations to myself daily, every day," and it just creates a different vibe. And what you're trying to do is is change your vibe. Um, I will also tell people that if they're depressed and not feeling good, is that they need to change their vibe, you might say. And what I mean by that is turn on some music. I mean, if we look back over history, music plays a huge part. I mean, how many times we there's a song comes on, it, could, it brings back a memory of, um, of, of greatness or love or, you know, something that makes you smile. Or that's or that music that you turned on to make you dance. Like my song that I turn on is uh, James Brown. I feel good, and every time that song comes up, I can switch my emotions or my vibe very very quickly. So that's another way of doing it to to get out of that space that you're wallow, wallowing in. Very powerful stuff, and I love the concept of choice. And that's something that we all have choices. and And I think a lot of times when we're getting in a stre- when we're in a stressful situation or we feel desperate, or we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, we don't really actually realize that we do have a choice. And 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 I find that, Patricia, you know, when people are stressed out and there is that anxiety, we end up kind of um, resonating at kind of a lower frequency. And it seems uh-huh. like we kind of get stuck in the muck and yuck of everything. And, and we yep. start kind of, you know, connecting with that energy. And the problem with that energy is – it's not solution based energy. It's like, you know, shallow breathing, overly stressed out, um, you know, and not being able to focus. And, you know, I know you've worked with folks who, you know, they're like, I just can't see the solution. And it's because they're not in the mindset. And it's hard. You got to take a step back. You got to breathe. You can't react. Yeah. You know, yes. and reactions. And that's key. another great word. Uh, that's actually that's another great word I love is breathing. I tell people um, it's not just a word; it's a it's an action. And when people say, "What do you mean it's an action?" I said, "Breath, breath itself, and breathing very deeply will actually l- help eliminate anxiety and stress and panic." And everything else. I mean, do you remember back in the day when we used to, they used to give us paper bags when we were having anxiety, you know, <laughs> type of things. They, tell, they give us a paper bag and you bump into that. Well, it's the same thing by just doing, heavy, you know, deep, deep breathing for like several times. It brings your blood pressure down. It calms you. And that is anxiety is really your blood pressure is just fine because you're, you're so, your mind is out of control. You're overwhelmed. So you have to stop. And that's when we go, it takes us back to that hamster wheel. You have to stop. You know, I tell people, I said, well, a lot of people say, well, I don't have time to stop. I said, yes, you do have time to stop. You just have to make time to stop. Uh, I remember somebody told me um, years ago that I wanted to go to Europe for um, uh, uh, three weeks. And they said, Patricia, you work all the time. There's no way you're ever going to take time to do that. There's just no way you're going to do that. And I thought about it and I said, well, you just make it a priority. 
And once you make anything, whether it's change, a decision that you're going to do and you make it a priority that I'm going to change, I'm going to get off the hamster wheel, then you will do it. But until you make something a priority in your life, like I made Europe a priority, sounds a little superficial, but I did make it a priority. And I went and I had a great time and nothing faltered in my life. But if you do not, and, and I'm going to step back here a second. You know how when people want that special dress or that big car or whatever, like I just talked about a trip, it's amazing if they really want it bad at how, how easily they get it or they get it and they find it and they do it. I want people to do the same thing with their lives because if they would prioritize their life and, 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 and learn and understand who they are, their whole life would begin to change and that happiness would not be as fleeting and that inner peace would be easier and bigger and better. Um, but getting people to really stop and get off the hamster wheel and refuel is, is a hard thing for people to do because they're scared to get out of that comfort zone, the, the comfort zone of, of, of craziness, if you know what I mean. People almost like they get comfortable but crazy. That's so true. And when we return, we're talking more about that because, you know, it is about that comfort zone. And the other thing, too, is that when we are so busy and there's so many things going on, we don't have time to really look at the things we need to be looking at. And that's right. It makes it easier to just kind of placate it, let, let that go, sweep it under the rug. So when we return, we're talking more about that, more about some of the stuff you can do, mindfulness, and the list goes on. So stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. I'll be back this time in two shades. Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, I'm being joined by Patricia Love. Patricia is the rah-rah coach, so healing yourself, healing the world. And, you know, Patricia, we were just talking about before in the last break, you know, we were talking about being able to not only make the right choices, but to also look at yourself when we're on that hamster wheel, and I know that many of you out there listening to the show, you're going a million miles an hour. You're wearing nine different hats. You know, you got two jobs. You got a job, whatever. Maybe you're going to school again. Maybe you got kids. You're doing all kinds of stuff. Maybe you're taking care of your 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 parents who've gotten up there in age as well on top of the work, on top of the kids, on top of this, on top of the school. And you got all that stuff going on, and it's hard to put things in perspective and things can really snowball out of effect, you know, like really get kind of crazy in those scenarios because we're not really stepping back and taking some moments to really keep control of our life. And Patricia, I know that you work with a lot of clients dealing with this, you know, how do people take a step back? I mean, how do we really go, Oh man, I got to reel it back in. I mean, I haven't even been focusing on my own life. I've been focusing on doing all this other stuff. Right. And you know what? I do get a lot of pushback. I mean, I get a lot of pushback. Well, I just don't have time. I got kids. I got this. I got that. And I'm saying, what other choice do you have? Do you, it's either you grow, you figure out a way to do this, or you you get sick. What do you want to do? So, there again, we go back to choices that um, if they actually take a step back. And I and I, what I'll do is a, a lot of times is I'll, I'll ask people to take a two minutes step back and what because a lot of them might have kids and their stuff they go i can't get rid of the kids i said well I'll tell you what go into the bathroom just go into the bathroom that's usually a good place some of them might be pounding on the door but it's a good place to lock the door as long as somebody's taking care of that two-year-old or whatever um but go <laughs> into the bathroom and just sit there because there's a good chance they're they're going to leave you alone for a couple minutes and I mean, it's so funny. There's this ad on television right now. There's just this lady in the, in the bathroom and she's like, I think she's having tea or she's just relaxing. She's gotten away from the kids and it, it, they yelled at her or something. And then they say, no, this is dad or something because they were looking for mom. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she was just trying to get away. And it's a place at two to four minutes. So you can breathe. When you can breathe and get a little bit of clarity, even if you take a walk in the in nature, you get more clarity. When you get more clarity, you get more focus. When you get more focus, you get more done. You get more creative. Your life changes because 
you're not just on that hamster wheel going around and running around. So I get people to uh, step off that hamster wheel for like two minutes to start with. I really believe in simple steps, simple and short steps, because when you ask uh, people to do things like, uh, you know, take, you know, meditate or meditate for an hour or meditate, they're like, no, there's no way I'm going to do that. I tell them, don't meditate, because first off, a lot of people have that word in their head that they have to do it for a long time. They have to do the ums and have their fingers together and all that kind of good stuff. I tell them to just take some quietation, step into the bathroom, step outside, walk around the house if you need to, get some air, just clear it so that you start to have some focus. So when they start doing that for a couple minutes, I find that they didn't want to go for five minutes, and then they want to go for 10 minutes. So because they like what they feel and it's really just feeling a focus and uh, so they can, that they're stepping off the hamster wheel. See, that's good. And, and, and having that focus and having that clarity. And, and that's the thing that, you know, in the world right now, I know that a lot of us are going through a lot of stress and strain. You know, we're dealing with all kinds of different things right now. And, you know, it seems like this year is kind of crazy. Um, but at the same point in time, you know, being able to have that clarity uh, and one of the things that I think is so powerful is, you know, I talk about mindfulness, but, you know, a lot of people go, well, how do you get mindful? And it's like, you know, being in the moment and trying to get into the moment. And, and sometimes you might actually have to really focus on something outside of yourself um, or focus on your breathing. But it's like maybe you focus on the grass growing, you know, maybe right. you focus on something, you know, like a plant and you focus on that, you know, that bud on that plant or maybe... You know, maybe you focus on your own hand. You know, a lot of people, we don't realize the miracles that we are. I mean, your hand, you, I mean, you focus on something that's like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, like, and getting yes. mindful in your own body instead of being on Facebook and, and getting on yeah, social exactly. media. You know, and it's like, you know, the, the addiction to social media, because I I know that many of y'all listening, because, you know, we I've been doing this show for a long time, and I know many of you are addicted to that social media. Like, yes, Instagram, like two hours of Instagram <laughs> is not changing your life in a powerful way. You know what I mean? That is, is not, not giving back to you. And they're focused on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've done it before. I mean, I was, I, you know, I, I'm a recovering, uh, you know, Instagram or social media addict. You know, I'm recovering. I'm recovering. Yeah, you know? we, we, we're all recovering from something. But I love the idea of that focusing. I tell people or my clients sometimes is that they're, especially when they're overwhelmed, to take like a, a pen. Um, just take a pen and just, you know, look at the pen and look at the pen only because, and this, first off, say this quote, which I love this quote from Wayne Dyer, is if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So like, for instance, taking a look at this pen, most people would probably think this is a second writing in instrument. But if you really look at it and you say, you know what, this pen can write love letters. This pen can write checks. This pen is pink. I wonder where this pen has been before. I wonder how this was made. You start looking at things from a different perspective rather than just being a pen. And you can go down a complete different memory lane of, of different ways and you change your focus of things and you change your perspective that this pen is not just a pink pen anymore. This pen could write a hundred thousand dollar check. This pen could open up, you know, get me into my house because my keys are broken. There's just all kinds of things that could be, but you got to change your mindset and change your perspective to looking at it in a different way. That's so true. And that's the whole thing about life, too. And one of the things that I figured out is that when you feel like you're having a bad situation or something that you're not really totally thrilled with, what I've realized is one of the best things we can do, and it's hard, is to switch the script on the situation. So instead of looking at it as doomsday and instead of looking at it as a total, complete, utter problem – we have to kind of take some emotional step back, even if a physical step back, and look at it from a different perspective. Um, I've realized that the word no um, yeah. is not really that bad. And actually, the word no, to some degree, can be actually good. And it's hard, though, because the way that the no is sometimes presented is pretty painful. And that's the problem is that you got folks, you know, and I, I know that, you know, I've worked with people and I've experienced in my own life when somebody says, you know, oh, well, I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that or, or I'm going to break this agreement or whatever it is. And you're like, God, it's like the end of the world at the time. But later on down the road, you realize it wasn't bad. It was actually necessary for growth. And so sometimes if we can see that ahead of the game. 
which it's yes. hard, then we don't go down that route of pain and suffering and, 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 and all this stuff. We actually take control of things and realize, okay, even though it's a no, it's not really that bad because it's actually a, it's actually a yes in my favor to some degree. Absolutely. I mean, I look at things in the moment when things happen, in the present, and things happen, I'm like, okay, that didn't work so well. So let me look at this from a different perspective. That means either I'm learning a lesson, or I'm going to grow from this, or something is bigger is coming. coming. So instead of looking at things as an op- obstacle, like I just lost this, it's look at it as an opportunity. And when you start looking at things from that way in a different perspective, not only does your inner feeling feel better, you open up yourself to, to many opportunities and doors that were open that would might have been shut if you didn't get that no. So it's it's all the way we look at things. It's like you said, said and I, I, I have a thing, and even on my website, it's like I flip women's scripts because we you know we 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 have a tendency to always have negatives, but some negatives turn into positives, and you have to look at them that way. That's so true. You know, not all of them. Not I mean, but but I think if you, I actually I think they all kind of in some way do actually. It just not might yeah. not be seen at the time. Exactly. Exactly. You may not feel it at the time. It may you may feel like your world's coming to an end. Mm-hmm. But if you approach it properly in the beginning, and and set yourself up already that okay maybe this this no is is hurting me, but how can I flip this and how can I make it better? How can I de-stress that? So I don't want to wallow in this no. Maybe that no is going to be a, a very good thing because now it's opened up a whole new area for me. So you, it's really how you look at things and embrace things and in, approach things. Uh, it's very important. It's so true. And when we return, we're talking more about that. We're going to be talking a little bit about, you know, maybe some programs as well. Um, and, and, and some things where you can be, um, you know, more accountable and more mindful and be able to really focus on you and be the best version of you. So stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. will be back in. I'll be back this time in two shakes. Get in here. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Patricia Love has joined me here live on LYTL, and we're talking about, you know, being aware and dealing also with, you know, sometimes when we have a no that's told to us in the last in the last segment we were talking about, when you get that no, how we can actually ingest that. It's such a painful process because we were raised to believe that when someone tells us no, it's a bad thing. And it's just not true. It's like sometimes that no is the best thing we could have possibly gotten. You know, Patricia, I don't know about you, but I've had a few people in my life that were like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Or this isn't going to happen. I remember at the time I was like, I was heartbroken. I was like, this is horrible. This is the worst thing possible. (laughs) Oh, my gosh, my world's falling apart. I can't believe it. And for like a week, you're just like, you're like, oh, I can't even deal with this. And then eventually you come around and, and later on down the road, you saw what it had to be done. And now if you can kind of get up on that a little quicker and start accepting that reality quicker, I think that there's more positive that can come out of it because we don't go flow into that depressed state or that, uh, that stressed out or that fear state. We can get above that and actually do some work to better the situation. And actually, it kind of goes all the way back to what we were talking about from the very beginning. It gets easier and easier to do that and to see the possibilities when you know more about who you are. When you actually stop and, and internal and, and, and understand your behaviors and what you've done in the past so you would, you don't continually do the same things over and over and over all the time. Um, because if you do it just, you know, you get the same result where it's a beautiful thing when you actually start seeing things in a different perspective, like we just talked about, that you're going to change things and do things quicker and they're not going to be so emotionally draining for a week. They may emotionally instead of drain you for, you know, three hours or maybe a day, depending on what this, depending on what it is. Um, and it's just really how you look at things. Um, that's really going to take you to the next level of, I want to say inner peace and feeling good and opportunities and things to be happy about. Because again, as I go back, we all really in life just want to be 
happy. And unfortunately, people right now feel that the only way they can be happy is to buy external things. I think right now, I think during this, what's been going on, I think we've had more people step back, reflecting and understanding who they are. What I'm hoping is that they continue on and keep moving forward with that because it's really easy to uh, get complacent and then be fine with it right now and then everything go back to normal again because you didn't create the right habits. So I'm hoping and praying that lots of things move forward with what's going on, but uh, it's, it's, it gets easier and easier the more you understand who you are to get out of those emotional drags and those definitely emotions that can move us forward quicker and, and enjoy life quicker. We, do, we don't have a long life here, guys. We need to really take it and, and enjoy each moment. That's so true. And, and and it is about enjoying each moment. And And I think one of the things, too, is that when you do finally figure out more about who you are and your identity and you begin to embrace that no matter what that is, and then you begin to actually enjoy the time that you're here on this planet. Uh, it's like it's like the the drama and the stress kind of goes away because you know when you're dealing with drama or you're dealing with anxiety and you're not in solution, you know it's it's draining. And you know a lot of those or it's times, a life sucker. Yeah, yeah, it's a life sucker. <laughs> yeah, and you know Patricia, like you know when when people are going through it as well as us. You know, yeah, it's I mean, draining. I've, I've done that to myself. I mean, I'm, we're talking about this, but I've totally done it to myself in the past. And uh, I had to learn and I had to go internal and I had to acknowledge some crap that I didn't like acknowledging, but I had to bring it out and I had to be really truthful with myself so I could move forward so that I, I could enjoy a life instead of always having, like you said, drama um, just stress and anxiety around me all the time or even within me. And I actually, I see it now. I see the drama around me and then I can, then I have a choice to remove myself. And it's, it, it's a wonderful thing when you have choices to be able to say, you know, I think I'll remove myself from this thing. I don't want to be in it because when we're in it, it's very hard to, um, to get out of it until you take that step back and look above and look down at what's going on. And it's so true. Taking that, it's, it's just taking a moment to allow yourself the time, because I've also realized on the back end that when you don't take the moment in the beginning, then you got to take the moment sometime. You you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. I, you can't get away from it. I had a big blow up uh, about 15 years ago when everything came to a head because I was not, you know, I was always motivational and positive and, and, and that kind of thing, but I was really good at compartmentalizing everything and stuffing it into a bag and baggage and all that. It was just, my baggage was getting heavier and heavier. And then one day it just completely explodes. And then you, you're, you don't have any choice, but to, um, to move forward and, and, and clean out your baggage somewhat. And it's not a good time to do it when you're in that, especially all of a sudden you don't have any money anymore and you're looking for money in purses and you're wondering, you know, why didn't I do this before? And it's, but unfortunately a lot of people get into that trauma mode and until they get into something that really bad happens to them or something that's crisis, um, they, it, it, they don't want to change all the time. So I encourage people that you don't have to change your whole life overnight. I mean, I'm a continual process. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm in progress continually to the, till I die, I'm sure, because I will continually grow. But if you can just take a couple steps towards creating a better you, that's a beautiful thing because the more you do it, the more you want it. Exactly. The more you do it, the more you want it. And and, you know, and the greatest thing, too, is, you know, and the one thing I've said over and over again and over and over and probably over and over and over <laughs> and over and over <laughs> and over and maybe over and over, you know, is that the most important relationship we have is with ourself. Yes. And if we don't yes. have that right, we can't get the other stuff right. And if we don't have unconditional love for ourselves, which is kind of hard to figure out and find. And once you find it, you don't want to let it go. But once you figure that out, everything else kind of falls into place. It truly does. It really falls into place. And, but it really takes the first step, like you've been mentioning through this whole conversation, is you've got to step back off the hamster wheel just a bit. You've got to really – and not and, – and when I say step off, I don't mean step off and then um, go on to Instagram. I mean step off 
and be by yourself. Be alone with no TV. Be alone with no radio. It's really hard for people to be alone with themselves if they're not used to it. But the more they do it, and I suggest just do it for two to five minutes. Take a, a walk alone, not with somebody. You want to be with your own thoughts. So I, I'm just suggesting that that's the only thing you do is just take two to five minutes. You will start seeing more focus and clarity if you can get through that two to three minutes. It's, I remember my very first time, it was harder than heck to, to be by myself. But I just kept doing it. And, and then it became like, oh, I like this. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's like anything else. You have to work up to it. So, you know, don't do those mass meditations. Do two to three minutes of just stepping away. Start focusing on yourself. And I'm going to tell you, clarity and thoughts will come into your mind that you never, ever thought about before. And you're going to be a better person. Not only for yourself, you're going to be better for your family. You're going to be better for your kids if you have them. You're going to be better for your friends. because your actions is what other people see. That's so true. That's so true. And, you know, it's, it's about being mindful. And, 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 and I think, you know, when we talked about in the beginning about the inventory and all, it's not about just finding faults. It's about just figuring out who you are. Exactly. You yeah. Know? And, that's and some so parts of us we don't always like, right? I mean, I don't like everything about myself, but I, I love more about myself than I dislike. But you can also fix that too, once you know those things. And so it's just acknowledging that we're human that this is who we are and there's nothing wrong with that. This is how we were born. And um, we all just need to want to uh, live the life we were born to live. That's so Definitely. true. That's so true. And lasting thoughts, Patricia, for our listeners today, something that you want to leave them with to really think about. Well, I, again, I'm going to, and I never like to overwhelm anybody because it's, it's nobody does anything if they get overwhelmed. And I'm just going to encourage people to really, Focus on their focus on their thoughts to be able to step back and just focus on some of their thoughts for a couple of minutes, um, bad or good, and write them down. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? And then using the word choose to choose to uh, move forward or choose to change it or choose to uh, do something that maybe you haven't done before and make it a um, and make it a goal to choose every single day because. What we have in this life is choice and we can choose to do things or we can choose not to. But if you don't um, want to move forward, it's a choice too. But if you could just step back, I think is the main thing. And, and I would say use the, use, use the word choose. Try to look at things in a different perspective. Look at the flowers in a different perspective. Look at your friends from a different perspective. Look at people and don't just be so judgmental on one thing look at things and try to see things from a different perspective. So I think I'm going to leave, leave it with that because if they could just do those few things, th it'll make a big difference in their lives. Powerful stuff, Patricia. Where, where do our listeners find you? Where can they find you? Well, they are Instagrammers. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Patricia love blogs and also my website, Patricia love.com. And that's just like it sounds L O V E. I love it. It's the good. We got the love in the house right now. We, we got, got the love in the house. house. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Patricia, I, I, I love having you on. So I look forward to it. If you want to come back on the show, definitely want to have you back on. Thank you. I love that. Well, keep it up. The Raw Raw Coach. Patricia's amazing. And guys, you know, I, I really appreciate you tuning in. And just remember, it's all about you. You are the Your relationship with yourself is the most important relationship. And this is not a narcissistic comment. This is a real comment. And getting to know yourself and love yourself and, and, and finding that, that true unconditional love for yourself and, and having fun and finding that inner child, it's all so powerful. And it can be done. And, you know, and that's what's so awesome about it is that we can find that and we can live in that state. And that's a powerful place to be. So I look forward to seeing you next time on the next podcast, Connecting In. Don't forget to check out all the shows here. Also, you can check out the website for any of the latest videos on YouTube. And, uh, well, you know what? I'll be back next week. So stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. will be back in. I'll be back. Well, I'll be back this time in three shakes. Three shakes.